Hi, I'm Andrew Moody, and I am here with one of the pioneers of black theatre in Canada. Vera Kudjo has been working uh, in Canadian theatre. Well, it's been 38 years, I believe, mm -hmm. of Black Theatre Canada, yes. the beginning of Black Theatre Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, black Theatre Canada was an award-winning and pioneering theatre company in Canada that focused on the works of people of colour and uh, from the West Indies to Africa to, to uh, uh, you know, Canadian, black Canadian stories. Mm -hmm. And of course she was an inspiration to me and to many others within the black Canadian community. And so I would like to introduce to you one of my heroes and one of the pioneers of black Canadian theater, Vera Kudjo. Hi. How are you doing? Doing okay. It's great to be here with mm -hmm. you and it's great to have you here. Great to be here too. Uh, mm -hmm. So, Let's start off with finding out information about you. Before we talk about your accomplishments mm -hmm. and the awards and all that stuff, let's talk about you, where you were born and where you came from. I was born in Trinidad mm -hmm. uh, quite a long time ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, couldn't be that long. And uh, I went to school in mm -hmm. Trinidad right up to high school. Um, tried to get into, um, to be a nurse, mm -hmm. and so I sort of wrote into the hospital. But as soon as I was, I got in there in three months time, I got a scholarship to go to England. Now, okay, first off, let's go back. So, talk to me about uh, where you went to high school. I went to Naparima Girls High School. Mm -hmm. High school, by the way, and colleges in, in the West Indies in Trinidad, you had to pay very heavily yeah, for, yeah, yeah. you know. So it was, uh, I was very fortunate um, mm -hmm. to be the only one in my family who got to go to high school. Right. Yeah. And how did that happen? Um, I was the last of my family out of six mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. And um, my elder brothers <laughs> worked and sent me to high school. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, and you also got a scholarship, is that correct? Yes. Um, at that time, there was something called the um, Colonial S Scholarships. Mm -hmm. It was the British colonial situation, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, Trinidad was not independent at that point. We were all sort of colonials. Mm -hmm. And uh, they used to give scholarships to young people uh, throughout the islands, and they would be sent mm -hmm. to England to study. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was fortunate to get one of those to study. So I, off I went to England uh, to study nursing and midwifery. Why nurse? Why? You know, nursing was one of the few sort of um, uh, choices. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, there wasn't seemed to be m much of a choice between nursing and teaching. Right. And those were the two right. careers that people followed. So, um, Especially for women of color at, the, yes, at that time. Yes, right. at that time. We're right. talking 1950. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so it was a different era. Mm. And what was life like in England? You know, um, England at that time was, was just um, recovering from the, the Second World War. Mm. So things were rationed, you know, um, mm -hmm. sugar and things like that were, were rationed. <laughs> um, and, but it, there was a, a feeling of sort of de re renewing, restoring, and, and um, the nursing profession was one of the, the very best things that you could be doing and employed in at that point, you mm. know. And how did people treat you in England at that time? Very well, um, because at, at that time, um, England having uh, won the war and stuff like that, you know, but, but suffered badly, mm -hmm. they had sort of began to open up um, to all the, the sort of British Empire's mm -hmm. people. And I was treated very well, you know. People who came on scholarships were treated like, you know, they, they were very special. Right. So people kind of looked after you. Mm -hmm. I, I went from Canada, actually, on a boat to, 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 to England. So you went up from Trinidad 
to Canada. To, to the States and then to the flew States. to Halifax. And then you flew to Halifax. And then yeah. three weeks on the ocean. How was your or ocean voyage? How did you fare? <laughs> Seasick. <laughs> no, really, were you? Did yeah. anybody uh, take pity on you and help you out? I mean, I was 19, right? Right. right. And, um, yes, mm -hmm. I, I had three people, three, uh, uh, two Scottish ladies and an English lady, decided to sort of just um, adopt me yes. on, on, for, on the ship. You know, this big yeah. Aquitania boat, one wow. of the Queen, the Cunard li Line. Wow. Uh, liners. And how long does it take to get from... It, it, from the then it was 21 days. Right. Wow. You know, so wow. part of those days I was under the weather. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. It's very different now. Yeah. Um, now, your experience in England uh, introduced you to nursing, but it also introduced you to the arts as well. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What were some of the things yes, you were opened um, up to? As a nurse, um, student nurses always sort of um, find ways of sort of entertaining themselves and so on. Mm -hmm. But um, there was something called the um, West Indian Students Union. And these were, were uh, um, young men uh, and women in the universities doing their studies in different things. Mm -hmm. And they form a very large uh, drama group. So. Um, and certain plays were, were done, and um, they would, would invite other students, you know. Right. So I became involved in the students' union, mm -hmm. and um, I had a friend who uh, was an actor, um, you know, Victor Patterson, and uh, from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And um, was he just a friend? Or? Just a friend. Okay. <laughs> just checking. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, so, so whatever plays they were doing, um, we were, you know, we were just part of it. Mm -hmm. And then later on, the, the hospital themselves, you know, every Christmas we had to do something. We had to pantom, develop right? skits and pantomimes and stuff like that. Right. So, so from then on, I, I really had a, mm -hmm. a sort of love for, the, for acting. Right. Yeah. So you were bitten. Mm-hmm. Okay. So in England, you were bitten by the... the, the um, the acting bug, mm -hmm. and then somehow you make it to Canada. What's that journey like? How did you get from England? From England, I had to go back to Trinidad mm -hmm. because on the scholarship, you know, you're limited. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's four years, so so you you after your four years study, hopefully you get your degrees, and and you go back. Mm -hmm. Although I tried not to go back, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. you have had to go back. And um, I worked for about a year or so in Trinidad, and um, a couple of years, and, um, and began to feel very restless, right. and wrote to, to Canada. I wrote to the United States. I wanted to go to the United States because uh, I had a sister there. Mm -hmm. And um, when, when I was supposed to get a visa to go to the United States, it was suddenly um, you know, disallowed. Uh, so then I wrote to, to Canada because they needed nurses in Canada. Right. And um, I wrote to Toronto General Hospital and, and um, was accepted now, as a staff nurse. Okay, tell me about your sister and her experience in America because at the time it was very different than it is now. Yeah. So what was her experience like? like uh, where was she working? Where she... Was she, she she was studied. She studied in England as well, right. and went straight from England to Albany. Okay. And um, I, I, I always thought that that uh, the United States was 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 better. Right. You know. Right, right. And I think at that time, it it, it was it was really encouraging and, and good to be a nurse, studied yeah. in England, yeah. and go to the United States. They, you know, they valued you. Yeah. Um, the, the studies in, in England was always valued, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, for some reason or other. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I got the impression that, look, I want to go to the United States as well, you know. Right. But I just, it didn't happen for me. Mm -hmm. But for her, she enjoyed it. Okay. She enjoyed um, working. Um, from Albany, she went back down to New York City, right. and she got um, work in several of the hospitals there, you know. Right, right. But it was also a very different time b back then. So, uh, can you talk about some of the, the events that were happening in, in America that, around that time? In America, um, the, 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 in the 60s, mm -hmm. you're talking about the 60s, yeah. 
um, we had this, the whole civil rights movement right. was sort of like, um, you know, gearing up mm -hmm. and um, it, it sort of just came into fruition right. uh, during that time. So people were very conscious culturally, right. politically, socially, in, in mm -hmm. every which way, you know, and um, as a nurse, and I think my sister too was the same way, we, we didn't pay much attention to, to the political scene, you right, know? Right. Like, like we had a job to do and we try to do that as best as we can and, yeah. and, and we were focused into the, the, the sort of what's happening in the medical field and that sort of thing. Yeah, and then you come up to Canada mm -hmm. and uh, what was your experience like when you, when you first landed? When I first landed, um, it, it was a little sort of, <laughs> to say cold, it, it was really cold because I landed here on the 13th of December, right. 1960. Right. And uh, I was not expecting, you see, in England, I, we had um, a different kind of um, attitude one to the other and even in hospitals with the patients and so on. Mm -hmm. So the whole lifestyle was kind of different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a little bit disappointed and disillusioned um, with, with the way people treated each other. Well, how so? How did people treat each other? Um, it, was, it was distant. Mm -hmm. It was distant. It was not as friendly, you know, right. uh, as the English, you know, community mm -hmm. uh, in, in the nursing field. It was very business-like. It was, oh, it's four o'clock, you know, get, get, do your job sort right. of thing. Right. And that began to, you know, um, irk me a bit. Oh, really? <sighs> did it lead to maybe um, any uh, confrontations? At the well, it actually did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? um, I was working in the neurosurgical ward. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in Toronto General, mm -hmm. and um, in that ward you had people with uh, very um, severe injuries and so on, people who had met in accidents and, uh, you know, their, their necks and spines were, were broken and so on. So, mm -hmm. so one particular patient I had to look after was on a striker frame. A striker frame is, 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 is a sort of a bed that you roll, roll around. Mm -hmm. and uh, the person is a paraplegic, they cannot move um, their limbs or anything. You know, you have to feed them and everything else. And this striker frame, you have to turn it every two hours. And, and the, the patient lies facing the ground just about, say, 15 inches from the ground. And, and it's very, it's, it's stressful. And, mm -hmm. and, and however, uh, on one occasion, I, he was asking me some questions and I was just talking with him. But it was also time to change our shift. Right. It, it was four o'clock and, and everybody was looking at the clock and you had to move and, you know, don't, just leave the patient, come on, we have to, to get, you know, to change the notes and so on. Mm -hmm. and, and I lost my cool at, at one time. They, they called me and, and I says, is this nursing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you all, you know? Like, how could you do that? How could you just leave a patient who, who's needing, mm -hmm. is in need, that's what he's there for, mm -hmm. you know, and be more concerned about the time and, and your, you know, statistics and so on. Mm -hmm. And I, I just lost it and I just was kind of <laughs> maybe rude or so <laughs> to, 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 the sta to the nurse in charge. And um, after that, they transferred me. <laughs> they transferred me to another ward because, you know, I was insubordinate. Oh, yes. I see.